I've never seen a diamond in the flesh I cut my teeth on wedding rings Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is a, I'm just that sad, is a sad clown. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty good. This is Big Lou, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha packs, exploring their F3 experiences, and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. Today on The Gloom, we have uh, a, another high impact man, and uh, it's an honor to, to be able to spend some time with this guy, but um, you may know him. He is, he is often uh, helping to develop leaders within F3 Omaha. Uh, he spent some time leading uh, a site, uh, Titan Alley. Um, he spent a lot of time helping with um, other events such as IPC and uh, has, has also helped to do some third F stuff with some of the, uh, the schools where we do our, our MRFs at. Um, and just an all around uh, stand up guy, I think it's helped me a lot uh, just to be accountable and, and to ask uh, better questions. Um, so Jean Claude, we're we're happy to have you, man. Um, you are uh, you're one of those guys in F three that I think just continues to push other men to get better uh, on, on all levels. So excited to hear from you today. Um, I remember your your first workout, but I wonder if if you would take us back and uh, maybe talk to us about that and. Um, you know, tell us, uh, what do you remember about that? And what was, uh, wh where did Jean-Claude come from? Sure. Um, so Crawl, uh, whom you all know, has been a good friend of mine for uh, over a decade now. Um, he actually um, had a uh, holiday party and Tater Tot was one of his newer friends at the time. He had just moved into a new neighborhood. And I had met Tater, not knowing him as Tater, but this goes to the history of, of my relationship. So I had started, uh, I moved to a new neighborhood and started doing my own exercising, trying to make some life changes. Uh, I am nine years older than my spouse. Uh, we started having kids what some would call later in life. I was in my mid to late 30s when we had our uh, first child. And uh, I really had to take stock of what the next chapter of my life was going to look like um, and how I was going to be able to be present for my boys because I didn't certainly did not want to be that old parent uh, that couldn't do things with their high school kids. Uh, uh, so I I uh, had started running on my own, making some life adjustments, and Crawl had shared with me that he, he really set the hook well, because he told me, well, I've been going to this men's workout group, and then he stopped. And if you've ever met Crawl, he's like a man of few words, and he certainly is not going to offer more information uh, than, than is necessary. So he told me he'd been going to this men's workout. Of course, I was having complete FOMO because I was like, what, tell me about this men's workout. You know, and we had gone to the gym for a couple of years, but it just, it was inconsistent, just didn't work out very well. So I was kind of doing my own thing. He was doing his own thing. They started this men's workout group and it just so happened to be with Taylor. And so after a few weeks of engaging with him, I got an invite and I showed up uh, at Corn Husker Handicap, which today being Tuesday uh, was, uh, another Cornhusker handicap workout. And he also offered up that if I wanted to, because I felt like I was in fantastic shape, offered up uh, the pre-run. And he said there were people that ran in, you know, seven minute miles, eight minute miles, 10 minute miles. So I decided to show up for a pre-run at Cornhusker handicap. Uh, and if you remember, there was a Biggie Smalls was in the group. Uh, I think I remember Stretch, uh, yourself, Armbar. Armbar had just been coming out for about a week. Um, and I thought, ah, yeah, I'm in pretty good shape. I'll, I'll come run with these guys. So we start this run, and I look up this hill, uh, which happened to be Shirley. And um, I felt like I was going to die. Uh, Biggie Smalls and Plague, I remember both of you just talking the entire time, trucking up the hill. 
And I am just like, this is, you know, if, if anybody's, if hasn't run Shirley before, it's in the first mile of your workout. You basically have a half mile warm up. Uh, the trek up Shirley is a quarter of a mile, but uh, because of my recent training, it is a hundred foot increase in elevation in 0.25 miles. So it is one of the more aggressive hills in the metro area. I'm sure there are more challenging ones, but it, it, so after three quarters of a mile, I was gassed and we had obviously two and a quarter miles to go. And I logged, I think my fastest 5K ever that day at about an eight minute, 30 second pace. Uh, and then uh, after thinking I was gonna die, uh, then we went to the workout. So that's really uh, what, I, I don't remember anything about the workout because uh, it was simply just trying to recover from that run. And Clorox happened to be uh, at an FNG with me that day. Um, and so we celebrate our anniversaries together. And getting to Namorama, um, I remember telling folks, uh, exercise a little bit, said I'd probably drink too much beer. And, uh, and then uh, I said, I, I have started uh, uh, practicing um, going uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and someone yelled out Jean-Claude and then it was cemented and that's how I got my name. So uh, I do love it. Um, I think it's not at all appropriate, but uh, uh, over the past two years, it's gotten shortened a little bit to JC, but uh, it, it's a name I'll, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. And, and wherever my journey takes me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely keep Jean-Claude with me for the rest of my life. There, there's a, um... Not too many FNGs show up for the pre-run, so that that took some guts uh, <laughs> to do that, you know. Uh, Stupidity or lack of foresight, you know, is probably a, a better way to describe it. Well, and and there's a, a picture I'm thinking of on uh, I think it's your Strava profile of uh, Jean Claude, and just like in one of those like you know Jean Claude intense moments and and i think there's some match there of the of personality right you could be uh intense you get to the point you don't you know and I, I love that about you i mean i think um that's that's part of why you've had such a tremendous impact on on me anyway um so is this two years or three years this last two celebrated my two-year anniversary so i'm into my third year um first what? week in july Okay, so tell me about, I mean, two years, that's still a really long time, and you, you've seen us through different phases of expansion and different guys kind of joining and through the pandemic. What, what have been some of your kind of key moments or, or memories that stick out to you that have, have made you stick with the group? Oh, gosh. Um, early on, I think I was week two, Plague asking me to lead a workout, and I'm like, look, dude, I'm just here to get fit. Like, I... I really don't have a lot of interest. I just uh, prefer to participate and, and, and uh, uh, really shied away from those initiatives. And then I think it was two weeks later, he asked if I wanted to start leading the pit or a papillion work, si work outside, which again, I like had to throw up the stiff arm Heisman and, and, and try and keep you at bay for a little bit. Yeah, you were pretty adamant for a while that, uh, and I remember, you know, you kind of gave the story of, uh, and it's a, and it's true, right? You were, you were like, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I've led a lot of different things, and I'm and I'm ready to just be a good follower. Um, and I, I remember that that stuck out to me because that's um, that's not really what you hear. You know, most guys have some anxiety or nerves around leading, uh, but you were intentionally focusing on on following, which is a pretty. I think it's important for all leaders to really spend some time following, um, for sure. Well, I think as any of us advance in our careers, um, perspective is important. And I think an underutilized skill is followership. Um, we all, we all want to, uh, in F3, we're all trying to plant, grow, and serve small workout groups for the reinvigoration of male community leadership. And that is absolutely, um, you know, the mission. Um, but I think leadership qualities are very effectively demonstrated by being a good member of the PACs and by being a supportive member of the PACs or a supportive member of your organization. Um, 
and, and I, it's something I've tried to be intentional about as I enter a different chapter and a different time in my professional career, um, which just happens to align with you know my my engagement with F3. Um, you know my personality, Pony. You as well know my personality. That um, it's very easy for me to jump out front. It's very easy for me to uh, to have thoughts or to share opinions. Um, and, and what I try and focus on lately is, is, is receiving those opinions and, and digesting that perspective and then being able to turn around and engage others with that vision that our leaders share. So um, that's part of it. And, and I think early on, that was what I was focused on as well and part of the reason. And I just didn't know you really didn't want you asking me to do stuff. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> no, no, that that's great. Yeah. No, I think uh, I mean you've hit on some great points. You know, being able to follow um, leaders, and you're actually by doing that, giving other people an opportunity to step up and be a leader. Right? Can't be a leader without followers. So I love that. Um, I guess when did you decide? Hey, it's it's okay for me to make this transition now. I do want to take on this leadership role. And I guess what went into that? Um. So. It was Primarily out of laziness, um, I will I will share with you that uh, while I am not a redwood, I do consider myself at some level an OG now. That uh, as you look around the the AOs, there especially in Sarpy County, there's so many folks that are in their first year, and it's so exciting to see. Um, but uh, Firewalker and I. Uh, joined about the same time and, and Nobs at a similar stage about that summer. Um, and we were six day a week guys, including pre-run. Um, and we were driving a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes, no matter where we were, um, just because of proximity. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I look back very fondly on those times and I miss them uh, uh, on different days. But I remember being at a lunch and just being inspired in Plague. I think I said to you, I, I want to launch um, a Monday Murph site, uh, and I think Papillion's ready for it. Uh, the, the pit had started to get some traction. Um, the sand lot was in existence, but again, that was it was what I would call non-traditional because it was primarily running, um, only running. And I thought one of the best ways to really establish Sarpy County um, would be to mirror some of the things that have been done successful and provide some continuity across the different geographic areas of F3 Omaha. Uh, so uh, I picked a spot that was two blocks from my house <laughs> and, uh, and uh, asked to, to launch Titan Alley. And that was a year ago this past week, we launched, uh, uh, Labor Day uh, 2020, post, you can call it post pandemic, but you know, really the year of the pandemic. Um, and a lot of memories similar to the pit of Smurfs with two guys, Murphs with three guys. And, and uh, um, many of us are blessed with the starfish of we spin off because there's too much pressure. And that's something I consistently worry about uh, with F3 Omaha because the absolute best times in my F3 life have come from small group interactions. And if we get back to the mission to plant, grow, and sort of small workout groups that, that uh, um, free to lead, the 16 or less is the, 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 the engagement you get, the the development you get, the accountability you get uh, with those smaller workout groups really provides that um, magic for acceleration and, and has all those components. So um, that's what we did. And uh, I can say with uh, uh, a great amount of pride, uh, we consistently, uh, since I have handed off, it, I have had the plague effect where it really takes off and it becomes very, very popular once I leave. And we now have consistently the largest smurf in the metro area, which is in no small part because I'm now gone. 
That's awesome. What? Um, tell us a little bit about the. So we know that um, Titan Alley has the this, the self proclaimed best pull up bars uh, in the region. Um, <laughs> so I'm curious to know your thoughts on on uh, what exactly qualifies as the best pull up bars, and then tell us about the name. Where did Titan Alley come from? I, I can't remember that story. Yeah. So, a couple of. Uh, well, let's let's see. So, best pull-ups in the metro um, probably was a result of some uh, um, marketing, I guess, with <laughs> some creative marketing uh, to try and try and eh some folks down south. Uh, there is a wide variety of ways you can perform pull-ups um, uh, with a, a pretty substantial apparatus on the playground equipment at Prairie Queen Elementary. Um, and Best Coffee in the Metro was already owned by the Beanery. I tried Best Coffee in the Metro. I got slapped back by Slow Rose. So I didn't really want Second Best Coffee in the Metro to be the, the, the tagline, although it is included. So we went with Best Pull-Ups in the Metro. So um, that's how that came about. Titan Alley, uh, proximity to Papillion South, Papillion South Titans. Um, I do like to be intentional about about titles and labels and uh, Titans um, uh, carry the world on their shoulders in, in, in Greek mythology in mythology Atlas Titan so I thought uh, uh, we would be carrying a, a substantial load down in Sarpy County uh, with the launch of Titan Alley and, and then she stuck and, and people seem to gravitate to it but uh, I can tell you, having the very first AO launch with a tandem t-shirt offering was it was was a tough go uh i once again had to break out some creative engagement to actually fill that order <laughs> and the the funny part was uh i think uh i think you get 10 days to fill your order to capacity and it's 15 or 20. And we used all of those, and I think I ordered three or four items just to make sure the order was full. And then after that, I think it was Cornhusker Handicap opened their order, and they filled in like 12 hours. So, <laughs> yeah. but I could I could fondly say now, uh, looking back, uh, if we reopen that order, there would be a lot of support, and uh, it has grown beyond what I could have ever hoped and imagined, and it has its own flavor. Um, and the part of what I love about being a member, a resident of SARPY is, you know, um, our population uh, has unique needs, unique profile, uh, 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 unique demographics, um, but we all fit really well into the mission at F3 and under the umbrella F3 Omaha. So we're proud members of F3 Omaha, even if we have to show a little bit of swagger every now and again. I love that. I I will say, I, I, as a, a you know, efficiency is also a passion of mine. And um, the the Smurf at Titan Alley, for those of you that don't know, right? They they do a mile, then they do the ten sets, and then they do do another mile. And that is my preferred way to do the Smurf. That that is uh, it's most efficient from what I've seen for sure. Um, tell me a, a little bit, you know, so, so fitness fellowship and faith, I, I feel like you, um, continue to accelerate it in all three of those areas, but, but where do you see yourself? Where do you see sort of strengths or uh, possible areas for, for growth this next year? I know you've done some recent leadership assessments, so maybe, maybe some of that will, will play in here, but curious your thoughts. Sure. Um, so I would say my fitness journey has, is, um, detoured in a way that is is not detrimental but just a different dimension um that first year being a six day a week guy pre-runs all the time um was um a good reboot for for myself physically um but ultimately for all components of my life probably not sustainable plague and i know you and i have had conversations about you know, the appropriateness level for professional development, for family development, sustainability. Uh, and, I, and I injured myself often by uh, my tendency to be intense and, and, and bring a high level of 
intensity to my exercise regimens that uh, um, was ultimately um, led to diminishing returns because I'd be sidelined for weeks at a time uh, because of shin splints or a hip issue or a growing pole or just, you know, doing everything that I was trying to do in a certain amount of time with a certain amount of intensity that I've, I've dialed back and done some different things. Um, you know, Tuesday, Thursdays, uh, I will typically go to the gym uh, under a normal uh, exercise cycle. Uh, I typically uh, reserve some pre-runs, not all pre-runs, and it's just it's just different coming in, out of year one and past year two of, of really what F3 means to me. And, you know, the fellowship is ultimately more important to me than the fitness. Um, and having built some of those bonds uh, through the first half has enabled me to, to just expand on those second half relationships and not need to necessarily be present every time for every workout at every location. So um, that's probably different for me than others, um, but it's it, it's been a, a balance that I've uh, struck and I find sustainable. Um, the second F component, um, really trying to find those moments of opportunity at either luncheons or pre-runs, uh, interpersonal overlaps, um, for me have, have been the way to, to, to grow that second F component. And as we get into the third F, it's interesting. I actually view the third F in a more broad sense. I love the podcast and I hear a lot of people speak about their faith connection, um, specifically religious faith connection. And I truly find um, the opportunity of F3 is to have something uh, bigger than yourself to participate. So whether it is Sparty scholarship, whether it is Roll Bar's Ruck, whether it is the tragedies that each one of our individual families have experienced or people that um, go through life changes and we do uh, meal trains or volunteering at Heartland Hope, uh, something bigger than myself is where I absolutely love to put my energy. Uh, and I love to do it in ways that are intentional and meaningful and not simply just throw money at something, um, but in a way that it's gonna have impact. So you talked about, uh, I believe it was, uh, was it Tube Socks or Panty Hose that organized the Thankful Trot? Tube Socks. Tube Socks. So again, Tube Socks, thank you for that. Um, he offered up part of those funds at the Thankful Trot to go to Prairie Queen, that one of the Monday sites, and we have really taken the opportunity to engage with that grade school, Prairie Queen, um, to find out what their needs are, how we can be helpful. And, and look, it's not like we do something every time for Prairie Queen, but the opportunity to truly ask the question, what can be most impactful to you? And to provide something that's impactful to someone on a personal or organizational level, to me, is, is the epitome of that third F. Um, we can all give of ourselves, but to give with intention and impact, I think, is, is the, the, the most evolved form of, of third, third F that you can experience in this organization. Yeah, man. I think you just hit on some great points. You know, there are really some opportunities for, here, for you to grow. And, and all these different areas other than just the first F component. And, you know, I think you're, for the people that don't know Jean-Claude, Jean-Claude is a really interesting guy. He does a lot of different extracurriculars. He's a super fit guy. He, uh, many of this don't, many of you don't know, he's the, the longest uh, tenured white belt that ever in Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu. <laughs> um, he recently got his blue belt, but uh, he graduated on. But you do all these things, you have a family, what is it that's different that kind of gives you this opportunity to excel in those second F and third F components that you weren't getting in those, you know, those other things that you were, you were doing? Um, I would offer up, um, you know, substantially the Brick Builder event uh, this past year, having a hand in organizing that, um, that 
is professionally one of the areas I have a fair amount of experience in. Um, so being involved on the on the behind the scenes logistical side of what are the important components to this event, how are we going to uh, execute the event and putting those pieces together to me was very fulfilling um, because it ultimately resulted in a positive experience for the participants which to me provides momentum for the years to come that we can build on uh, to make it an even more successful event moving forward um, so that would be an example of like a third f that i just you know I had never been involved on the charity side of things before uh, where you could um, devote your time and it result in a positive outcome above and beyond what you what you had hoped. You know, we started early on with like, how many people are going to be there? Is this going to be just F3 folks and going through that, that decision making process? Um, wondering if there's going to be a dozen people that participate to turn out with the with the result we had um, that I that I think it lays the groundwork for opportunities in the future um, for us to have an even more substantial impact in the community and that is just one experience of what's available to us the the Heartland Hope um, I remember seeing Ferdinand getting inspired I think it was Christmas Eve last year he was like hey at the Sandlot bring canned food and the dude just on his own volition texted us all and I think he brought uh, it was hundreds of cans of food uh, to a food pantry in Sarpy County and just because he wanted to do it so uh, being a part of that is is really really cool we all talk about being uh, uh, what do I want to say charitable um, in different ways but to do something again coming back to that impact level to have to, have the ability to participate with people that things they're passionate about or causes that they want to to be involved in i think is great um this year for the past few years i've been involved in a, a charity golf event called mulligans for mutts uh, and, and it's uh the town and country humane society uh out of papillion no kill shelter uh where if you've ever been on a run and uh been with charlie my dog that he's a, he was a COVID rescue from town and country humane society uh having a hand in being able to contribute positively to an organization like that that just wants to do good work wants to do good things um on thursday i'm going to be uh we're conducting interviews for a new executive director of the radio talking book service of nebraska uh which is uh, basically delivering print content to folks that have vision impairments that they're not receiving through regular news sites. So reading of the local daily news, whether it is the Columbus Dispatch, the Norfolk Daily News, um, that's a, a resource and a board I've been a part of for the better part of six years now. Um, and again, not high profile, not things that uh, you see plastered across with advertisements and companies claiming fame, but just pe good people doing good work for good causes is something I care deeply about. And I think that's what I really like about F3 is it's a lot of good dudes doing good things for good people. And, and it's worked out well. It's been very fulfilling. Yeah. So you kind of hit on the, the third F component there. I guess, you know, what is it about F3 that kind of helps you on that second F component? outside you know you go to jujitsu you know what three times a week now well i got the blue belt blues now i, I got my <laughs> i got my promotion i haven't been in two months so <laughs> got my box of quit <laughs> okay uh but no it's, so uh I, when I, you I, were I'm training or when you're right doing now, your extra yeah I, I i can tell you this so um sparty and i started training for a race uh about 10 weeks ago and it stinks um and it stinks because you're doing a lot of it on your own and it has really uh made me realize what i've been missing week in and week out day in and day out by not having that network um i'm a i'm a high contact person um plague seeing your face today uh is you know it's been way too long since we've 
you know, just suffered through a beatdown together. Pony, last time we were together, we were at the woodshed um, and and knocked it out together. And, you know, I miss that stuff a lot. So October 3rd, my race will be done and I will be back at it. And that second half, I try and get to the second half lunch. I uh, did that this past week. Uh, engaging with guys and pop-ups have been part, yes, it's first step, but it's also second half. You're, you're really, you know, getting in the margins of time with folks um, when you do things like that. Um, and those have all been helpful, uh, just being accountable to each other, emotionally, not just physically. Um, how, uh, there's a number of packs going through different life changes right now that uh, um, staying connected with is, it's helpful, but that being away from the first step has definitely um, hindered my second half in the past two months, I would say. Yeah, man, it, it is, um, it's interesting just how they all all kind of flow together, because um, I, I would agree. I mean, I definitely do some solo runs and that sort of thing. And um, when I, I, I see, I follow Dread on, uh, on Strava, uh, and he often posts his uh, solo runs as sad clown runs. Uh, because it's, you know, you're by yourself. And, uh, sure. But I, I wanted to just call out, because Sparty mentioned this uh, last week when we talked to him, and your comment about, like, it doesn't have to be, um, the third F stuff doesn't have to be some big publicized, you know, event or some, you know, it can just be, hey, here's an opportunity. It's something I'm passionate about, letting other guys know, and then, inevitably you'll get other guys come alongside you and, and support you in that. I mean, you know, or, or even just challenging guys to push themselves. I think um, the Santa Saunter was one that, that you had done too that was really fun and it was just a good um, kind of first and second F uh, type of event, almost like a, a mini seesaw. But tell me, I, I know um, you're, you're a reader, you're, you're intellectual and, and you like to learn and um, you know, in as far as F3, free to lead, you reference Q source. How have you kind of, and I know Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has some flavor of, um, oh, we'll just say uh, theory or um, different components you hear like Jocko or Joe Rogan talk about, right? Where where have you kind of landed? Like where, where do you get your content that you're using to guide? Is QSource and Free to Lead some of the helpful stuff or, or where else have you found a uh, good? Sure. Um, no, it's interesting you ask that because I feel like in the past year, the noise of society has become overwhelming. Um, and there have been some sources for material that I've, I've honestly shied away from uh, because uh, I, I just, it has just not been easy um, to have people next to you, um, people in your life that even if they don't agree with you, it's the manner in which they don't agree with you um, that it has been pretty tough. So I gravitate more towards um, nonfiction than, 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 or than anecdotal or scientific and anecdotal. And so my, my favorite podcast right now is the Rex, the Lex Friedman podcast. It used to be the AI podcast. Brilliant, brilliant man uh, has worked Google, I believe, uh, DeepMind, he's worked on Tesla and their autonomous driving. Um, he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. And look, I, I, I know it's kind of a joke about that, but I think it lends to a level of problem solving um, that uh, is, is consistent with what I seek in in podcasts and information. I still have my Q source, or I, I'm sorry, my free to leave. I actually look back here. So it's open. I'm on page 31. Um, two, nice. two and a half years in, still haven't completed it yet. So Pony, you're, you're not alone. Um, um, I love that. I, I do want to, so um, the where my mind was going, so like even Ryan Holiday, you know, who a lot of guys look to for like Ego is the Enemy. He's written some some really good books that we've done book studies on. He's a huge advocate for um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and just the kind of stoicism uh, or the, the discipline, mindfulness, um, and really just, you know, adding an element of, of presence in it. Um, I don't know. I think that there's something really cool about that. 
Well, and that's why I've gotten cooler over the last nine months. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Uh, you're, about, you're about to be a dad, right, Pony? Yeah. That's right, brother. That's you right. Got, you got you to make some gains because once the dad jokes start, that coolness quotient will lose about 20 points. I, I do. Um, I am curious because I, I know um, as new guys have come in, I've, I've seen, I mean, people gravitate to, towards you, JC. I mean, I think, um, and, and you're, you've been able to push some guys to become site cues. You've, you've, you've taken effigies and developed them into leaders. And, and now we're leaning on those guys to really pave the way. What, um, what have you seen? So, so kind of switching up this question a little bit, but what sort of like advice for, for an FNG or for, for like an existing PAX member that encounters an FNG, like, like what um, sort of things should we, or could we be doing better to, to engage those FNGs a little bit more? on either side, the FNG or the existing PAX member? You know, I've, in listening to your podcast, agreed with a few things and and Sparty really stuck out last week. It was like, everybody's at a different point in their life. And an F3 will be right for the people at that point in their life when it is time for it to be right in their life. So. Well, I do believe in the mission in evangelizing to those sad clowns to offer them the opportunity. I'm not going to get lost on make, trying to make people come out. You know, and we've all talked and we've all been faced with the EH that went too far or the EH Tony the Tiger, if you're listening to this, he is the he, he's like the anti EH in Sarpy County. He like opens up with, "Hi, I'm Brandon. They call me Tony the Tiger. You should come work out." And then people run run the other direction. So, <laughs> he, uh, I love you, Tony. It's his birthday today, so I had to give him a shout out. So, happy birthday, Triple T. Um, to do better, I would say think bigger, um, think more cast your net wide. Um, it is easy to talk to your neighbor, right? Um, but think more broadly in the people you interact with in your life and have a timing component that fits. Um, honey, you're ahead of the game because you're, you know, you're pre-kids, but I think many of us, after we have children, uh, lose focus in some components of our life, fitness being one of those, and having other dads that are going through or have been through that process and latching onto them and say, hey, there is an opportunity, there is a way. I, I'm sorry, at 20, there's no way I was setting my alarm at 4.15 because I was getting home at 4.15 um, from my extracurricular activities, uh, whatever that may be. Um, and, and it's a mentality component that we can't, we can't fabricate that for folks. And I think we, it, it's been tested and proven. We can't fabricate the readiness level, but we can be ready for them when the opportunity arises. So um, I don't know that it's a matter of better, but I would say to FNGs, think about more. Think about what you want. Why are you here? What are you trying to accomplish? And what do you want for yourself? And then, and then try and do more. Um, set expectations for yourself high. Set expectations for those that you love even higher. And, and I think you'll uh, you'll find fulfillment in that. That's that's phenomenal advice, man. I um, we could talk for hours. I, you're just a, a wealth of insight, JC, and I I, um, I love it, man. I I really do appreciate everything that you've shared with us today, and um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, that 10-4 uh, date where we get to see you back out in the in the gloom. Um, Absolutely. You know, and I'll be rooting you on. I, I really wanted to do that uh, marathon with you, but my wife's birthday is is the day before, and I've learned my lesson to say no to some of those things. But um, I mean, nothing yeah. can make me more proud of you, Clay, than to show that discipline. Yeah. I know it's not easy. It's FOMO every day, but I, but I, I'm still trying to keep up on Strava, man. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to keep my miles high. Uh, I love it. Well, let's um, we'll we'll go out and uh, name Rama here, if that's right with you guys. Um, sound good? 
Absolutely. All right. Brandon okay. Flaherty, 35, the plague. The plague. John Whitworth, 30, Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Flew, 45, Jean Claude. John Claude. Love you, man. Oh, that was Jean awesome. Claude. Thank you, brother. Thanks, brother. Right.